Hello everyone, this is Colin from Fiber Optics for Sale. In this video, I will explain the application of a DP QPSK modulation scheme in 100 gig fiber optic transmission. DP QPSK stands for Dual Polarization Quadrature Phase Shift Keying. It is a fiber optic digital modulation technique which uses two orthogonal polarizations of a laser beam with QPSK digital modulation on each polarization. QPSK can transmit two bits of data per symbol rate. DPQPSK doubles that capacity, so DPQPSK can transmit four bits of data per symbol rate. So in order to transmit 100 gigabit per second data, we just need to transmit 25 gig to 28 gig symbols per second, since each symbol represents four bits of data. In this way, the electronics just have to work in the 25 to 28 gigahertz range instead of 100 gigahertz range. This is within current electronics capability and is much more cost effective. Before we explain DPQPSK in more detail, we have to understand BPSK and QPSK first. BPSK stands for Binary Phase Shift Keying. BPSK changes the face of a sine wave to represent one bit of data. So it transmits only one bit of data per symbol rate, either one or zero. This picture shows how BPSK works. This is a digital data stream. Positive one volt represents binary bit one, and a negative one volt represents binary bit zero. And this is a carrier sine wave. It is a continuous sine wave with no phase jump at all. However, when the digital data stream and the carrier sine wave is timed together, the carrier sine wave's phase is modulated based on current data. So if the current data is 1, the sine wave has no phase shift, and the phase is 0 degree, the wave is sine omega t. If the data is 0, represented by a negative 1 volt, the sine wave's phase is shifted by 180 degree, and now it becomes negative sine omega t, since it is flipped upside down comparing to sine omega t. This can be concluded from the equations here. So sine omega t is basically a sine wave with amplitude a equals 1 and phase phi equals 0 degree. And a negative sine omega t is a sine wave with amplitude a equals 1 and phase phi equals 180 degree. BPSK can be expressed in the constellation diagram. Here, the horizontal axis is called in phase, and the vertical axis is called quadrature phase. The distance from the origin is the amplitude A, and the angle from horizontal axis is the phase. So here, data 1 is represented by an amplitude 1 and a phase 0 degree. Data 0 is represented by amplitude 1 and a phase of 180 degree. In the last slide, when we showed the BPSK constellation diagram, we talked about in-phase and quadrature phase. So what does that mean? In-phase means no phase shift. So as shown in this graph, the sine wave starts from initial phase of zero degree, and we say the sine wave is in-phase. Quadrature phase means a 90 degree phase shift. So when we move the sine wave by 90 degree, we get the cosine wave and we call the cosine wave as in quadrature phase. But you can also look at it the opposite way. The cosine wave is in phase at an initial phase of zero degree, and you can get the sine wave by moving the cosine wave by 90 degree. The point is that sine wave and cosine wave are in quadrature state. Why is this important? Since we will use this concept and both sine wave and cosine wave in DPSK, Quadrature phase shift keying uses the quadrature concept, since it uses both sine and cosine wave to represent digital data. QPSK is basically two BPSK used in parallel. Since each BPSK transmits one bit of data per symbol rate, so QPSK transmits two bits of data per symbol rate. Let's see that you have the data 1, 0. The serial to parallel converter splits this data into two paths. Odd numbered digit, which is 1 in this case, is split into the in phase path, and the even numbered digit, which is 0 in this case, is split into the quadrature phase path. 
the local oscillator generates a cosine omega t wave. The cosine omega t wave is directly timed with the data in the in phase path, and this produces I signal. In this case, digital data 1 produces cosine omega t wave. The cosine omega t wave generated by the local oscillator is phase shifted by 90 degree, thus produces a sine omega t wave. The sine omega t wave is then timed with the digital data in the quadrature phase path, and this produces a Q signal. In this case, digital data 0 produces negative sine omega t wave. Finally, the I signal and the Q signal is linearly added together to produce the complete QPSK signal. In this case, this is a cosine omega t minus sine omega t wave. In the in phase path, cosine omega t represents data 1, and a negative cosine omega t represents data 0. In the quadrature phase path, sine omega t represents data 1, and a negative sine omega t represents data 0. So I signal has two phases, and the Q signal also has two phases. When they are added together, they produce four different phase combinations in the complete QPSK signal. This is listed as cosine omega t plus sine omega t, negative cosine omega t plus sine omega t, cosine omega t minus sine omega t, and a negative cosine omega t minus sine omega t. All four wave combinations can be expressed as a sine wave, as shown in the list. All have an amplitude of a square root 2, but the phase phi is different at quarter pi. 3 fourth of a pi, 7 fourth of a pi, and 5 fourth of a pi. These four sine waves with different phase shift is marked in the QPSK constellation diagram as dot 11, 01, 00, and 10. Remember, the distance from the origin is amplitude, and the angle from the horizontal axis is a phase shift. Each laser beam can be split into two orthogonal polarizations the horizontal polarization and the vertical polarization. So if we use QPSK modulation on each polarization, we get DPQPSK, which stands for Dual Polarization Quadrature Phase Shift Key. Since each QPSK transmits 2 bits of data per symbol rate, DPQPSK transmits 4 bits of data per symbol rate. Let's look at it how it works. The laser source is linearly polarized, which means it has only one polarization. Here, we can assume it has horizontal polarized. The laser beam power is split evenly by a beam splitter. So these two paths have same power, and both are horizontally polarized. Let's look at the upper path. This laser beam is then split again into two paths. The upper modulator accepts data stream 1, and the lower modulator accepts data stream 2. Both modulators produce cosine wave, but the lower modulator has a 90 degree shift, and the wave becomes a sine wave instead. So when both waves are combined again, you get a complete QPSK signal. This signal is still horizontally polarized. But after this polarization rotator, it is rotated 90 degree and it becomes vertically polarized. The lower path follows a similar technique, but they accept data stream 3 and 4 instead. Also, there is no polarization rotator so the laser beam is kept at horizontal polarization. When the vertical polarized beam from upper path and the horizontally polarized beam from lower path are combined together, you get a DPQPSK signal, which is then transmitted to the single mode fiber. So if each data stream is 25 gigabit per second, we get a combined signal of 100 gig per second. This picture shows a 100 gigabit per second DPQPSK fiber optic modulator product from Fujitsu Optical Components. You can see that it has many pins, which are the four binary data streams and some DC bias control pins. You can go to this website address to study it in more details. So there you have it. You can visit fo4sale.com for more free fiber optic tutorials. I will see you in the next video.